Hey everyone, welcome back to Shapeshifter's Den. Today, I want to talk with you about one of the godfathers of modern movement training, a man named George Haber. George Haber developed a system of physical training known as the natural method, a method which was to become a precursor to movement systems such as parkour and movement. During his time, George was renowned for a remarkable ability to move across any terrain and in any circumstance with absolute ease. In fact, even today, his level of movement ability is rarely seen outside of professional parkour athletes and caporistas. As a youth, he had a standard physical education, but it wasn't until age 27 that his views on training and his movement skill really began to change. It was 1902, and George was serving in the military on a small island in the Caribbean Sea. Without warning, a previously dormant volcano erupted on the island. A wave of hot, toxic gas hurtled down the slopes at nearly 400 miles an hour, reducing the cities on the island to absolute rubble and killing nearly 30,000 people. Suddenly, George found himself in a race against time, coordinating an extremely difficult rescue effort. Those who were able-bodied did what they could to save lives, but many couldn't handle the requirements of the situation. The rubble was steep, awkward, and constantly shifting below the feet. Every step was dangerous and the rescuers were constantly in danger of becoming victims themselves. In the end, George was able to save over 700 people, but the event would change the way he viewed physical training forever. During the event, George had made a number of observations that became key to his understanding of human movement. First and foremost was the observation that it was the strong and capable who were able to save lives in times of need. Now more than ever, he could see the importance of physical preparedness in a world where natural disaster, war, and calamity were all part of life. Second, it was painfully obvious that although his standard physical education was helpful, it still wasn't nearly sufficient enough. Improvements could be made based on real-world circumstances and needs. And finally, a standard belief of the time was that women shouldn't train and that it was a man's place to be physically competent. Yet after this event, George would never again entertain such a belief. Women had as much to lose as any man, and therefore as much to gain from physical preparedness. Gender mattered little when there were lives to be saved. Upon returning to Europe, George set to work trying to develop a system of physical training that created capable and competent movers in real world situations. The task was made easier by the fact that George had witnessed such movers before. His tour of duty in the military had taken him to many parts of the world where he witnessed native populations who still lived off the land. In his own words, their bodies were splendid, flexible, nimble, skillful, enduring and resistant, and yet they had no physical education other than their lives lived within nature. It was from these native populations that he would gain the inspiration necessary to develop what he called the natural method of physical training. Within this system were to be found natural movements of necessity, such as running, jumping, swimming, and climbing. Basic martial arts were added for self-defense and survival very important during times of war and conflict. Obstacle training, such as vaulting, swinging, and brachiation, were added to create agility in all possible circumstances. This portion of the training was very similar to modern parkour and some aspects of modern military training. And ground-based calisthenics and crawling movements were added for strength and joint integrity in order to minimize the chances of injury. Modern training has largely been focused on aesthetics, and while there is nothing wrong with this pursuit, it does not create a more capable mover, and it will be of little help to you or others in times of disaster and need. Learning to create a more capable body comes with a plethora of benefits in terms of health, vitality, and the enjoyment of life itself. George Hubert was aware of this and believed it to be important, yet for himself, after experiencing one of the worst natural disasters in all of recorded history, nothing compared to the joy brought by being capable of saving life. This was reflected in his lifelong personal motto, be strong to be useful.
Well, that's it for today. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Down below, I'll leave some links to books and resources for those of you who wish to dig further into this really important subject. With the recent uptick in natural disasters seen this year, this topic has never been more relevant. Be aware this form of training doesn't require new equipment and it doesn't require advanced training programs. Simply get outside and begin to move, begin to play, climb a tree, see what your body is capable of. Reap the benefits of the training that you have already done and in the process, you will fine tune your body to the real world and maybe, just maybe, you'll end up saving someone's life someday. Please like, please share, and as always, keep moving everyone.